QR code to do that. So if I move to the side, all right, you should be able to have that app in a moment. And if you scan your phone onto that app, and you or you write down the rockchurch.app, you will be able to download the app, download the app completely free of charge. Uh, so hopefully that app will come up in a second on your screen. It should do. I don't know if it has or hasn't, but it should do. Amen. Praise God. Oh, Becky's been on the app. She said it's really good and she enjoyed it. Uh, Tracy says a little blip. Uh, who else? What else we got? Betty and Gordon. Good to see you. How are you, Betty? How are you, Gordon? Great to see you. So there's that app. And also, just to let people know uh, what night we're in. We are in uh, Psalm 23. So we're in night 23. If I just put this across here, we did initially 21 days, but now we're in 31 days. So we went on a journey. We went on a journey of 21 Psalms, and we were initially in lockdown for 21 days, but now we're doing 31. So we've increased by one, uh, by 10 more Psalms. And you should still be able to hear me um, as I swap the psalms across there. Praise God. Thirty-one days together in the Word of God. Thirty-one days pushing through. Amen. So if you've just tuned in, my name is Pastor Ian. I'd like to welcome you. If this is your first time finding us on Facebook, you are more than welcome to come and join with us. We gather together every evening online at the Church Without Walls at 8 p.m. UK time. We have people from all over the world that come and join us and celebrate the goodness of God. We're going through the Book of Psalms. Initially, we did 21 days and uh, then we've just increased it by another 10 days. And so we are in 31 days of the book of Psalms. Right? Amen. Praise God. And uh, we've uh, created an app uh, to put our um, information on there. We've created an app for people to download. And this app is completely uh, free of charge. And you can download that app. And that app enables you to see past recordings and things that are going on. Uh, you'll be able to see on there. Amen. Lorne has put, I've been on the app and we're only supposed to see previous recordings. I don't know. All our recordings and all the recordings that would be on here um, would be on the app. So everything that we've done um, and as we go on, we'll add new things and we'll add more information and new videos, etc. Hallelujah. Right, okay, let's get into the Word because it's really exciting um, and um, it's great to be here. It's great to see so many. Amen. Praise God. Here we go. So let's have a look. I've just noticed that the live button on the te top left-hand corner um, or the top right, depends which way you're looking, that's normally red and that's grey at the moment. Um, but it's normally I don't suppose that means anything I'm not sure if anybody knows let us know but the most important thing is is we're here this is the day the Lord has made and we're gonna rejoice and we're gonna be glad and we're here at the moment and we're gonna have a look at Psalm 23 it's an exciting psalm it's an awesome psalm it's a it's a real famous psalm guys that you're gonna know this psalm and you know it already but it's a very famous psalm and it simply says this. It says, The Lord is my shepherd. I lack for nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me besides quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. Amen. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Verse 4. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me 
in the presence of my enemies you anoint my head with oil my cup overflows uh, amen surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever hallelujah hallelujah it's an incredible psalm a psalm of David it, it, it says the author at the top of the psalm a psalm of David the Lord is my shepherd the Lord is my shepherd I lack for nothing he makes me lead uh, he leads me by still waters I don't know if somebody asked you how would you describe God if somebody asked you how would you describe Jesus I don't know I don't know what analogy you would put but when David described God, he described him as a shepherd. Right? He says, the Lord is my shepherd. And David was a shepherd. When he was a boy, he was a shepherd boy. He understood right, that the sheep were being protected by the shepherd. That the shepherd would lead the sheep to good places, not bad places. That as a shepherd boy... David would lead his sheep to green pastures. He would lead his sheep to still waters. He would lead his sheep to good places and healthy places. And I don't know what it is, but sometimes some people have the wrong understanding of who God is. He's a good God. He doesn't want to lead you to negative, bad places. He wants to lead you to good places. He wants you to be in a good place in your mind, in your heart, in your spirit, in your relationships. He wants you to be in a good place. Amen. The shepherd protects the sheep. The shepherd, uh, you hear the story when David went to Goliath. He said, I can handle this. And they said, no, you can't because you're small. He said, I can because I've handled mountain lions and, 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 and I, 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 I've handled animals and bears that have tried to attack the sheep. But I have stood in and I have fought on, um, uh, on behalf of the sheep. I have protected the sheep. So our God is a good shepherd. Can we get an amen? Our God is a faithful God. Can we get a hallelujah? And he wants good things for you. He wants you to be blessed. He wants you to be um, prosperous in your mind and in your spirit. He wants you in a good relationship with him. He wants you in a good place. But he also will protect you. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. He will protect you. Amen. So I'm telling you what. We are in good standing with God. Because he looks after us. He wants the best for us. He protects us. He's a shepherd. He says, The shepherd makes me lie down in good places. Amen. In green pastures. He says, He leads me beside quiet waters. Hallelujah. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along right paths for his glory and for his name's sake even though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i will fear no evil hallelujah let's just stop there a moment let's just go back again let's just get this deep down into our into our spirit man tonight the lord god he is my shepherd he is my boss he is my king he is my Lord. He's the one who's in charge of me. Amen. Can you say that tonight? That God is in charge of you. He's the one who covers me. He is King of Kings. He is Lord of Lords. That's who he is. He's King Jesus. He's mighty God. He's Yahweh. He's awesome. The Lord is. God is my shepherd. And let me just put this in as a bit of a side note uh, this evening. That when... David speaks here, he doesn't say the Lord is our shepherd. He doesn't say the Lord is everybody's shepherd. He doesn't say the Lord is, is the shepherd of the Rock Church and, and the family of the Rock Church. He, say, he doesn't even say uh, um, the Lord is the shepherd. So he doesn't even come in um, and, and sort of try and use doctrine here and, and the Lord is the shepherd. The Lord is our shepherd. No, 
David had a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And tonight, if you're watching, the most important thing that you can pick up from just tuning in tonight or tuning in on replay, whatever time you're watching this, is the most important thing for you to pick up uh, from my words is that a relationship with Jesus is the most important thing. It says, the Lord is my. The Lord is my. The Lord is my shepherd. It's a personal thing. Amen. It's a personal thing. The Lord is my. Amen. William is put my. Would you declare now? And would you just put on your phone? If you can say tonight with confidence, he's my God. He's my shepherd. Just write down there, he is my God. Or write down my. Or write down my shepherd. Make it personal tonight. Declare it. Say, he is my. I know he's our shepherd. I know he's our king. I know he's our God. I know he is the Lord. I know he is the shepherd. But can you say, he is my shepherd? Just write it on there. Mel has put, amen. Anne has put, amen. Um, Lorna has put, he is my. Amen. You see, the Bible says that we're the bride of Christ. And the Bible says that uh, he's the groom. And that this is going to end right in a wedding. Right? So, so he's your groom. You're his bride. Uh, you are betrothed to him. He is betrothed to you. Uh, 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 you are his. Right? And he is yours. So you can say, he can say, Ian is mine, but you can also say God is mine. He is my shepherd. Amen. He is my Lord. He is my King. Hallelujah. He's an awesome God. He's a mighty God. So the Lord is my shepherd. He makes it personal. Then it says, I lack for nothing. He's saying, listen. The sheep still had to scale mountains and go around into different valleys and walk through valleys. And the sheep had to go and find green pasture. That still had to happen. The sheep just didn't. The sheep weren't just sunbathing on the mountain hill with a glass of champagne in one hand, uh, you know, you know, a, a <laughs> with a cocktail stick in there, you know, and uh, uh, some caviar in the other, just laying back on the sunbed. And David brought everything to him. That's not what happened. The truth of the matter is, is that they had to go where the shepherd told them to go. They had to travel. They had to walk. They had to climb to find this green pastures. So it says, the Lord is my shepherd. I lack for nothing. It, me, lack for nothing well, didn't mean that they were just sitting there and being lazy. It just meant that I know that if God's got my back, if God's my shepherd, that he's going to lead me to good places. Can you say with confidence in your heart tonight? Because I know you can for those who know the Lord. And uh, uh, Can you confidently say, if I don't know you tonight, and I don't know where your heart lies, but can you say with confidence in your heart, because of your relationship with Jesus, you lack for nothing. Amen. Let me explain that. The reason why you can lack for nothing when you know the Lord is your shepherd is that the grass you eat, the house that you live in, the car that you drive, we all thank God when we have nice houses and nice cars and, 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 you know, and it's good to, to aim uh, to improve yourself. Do you remember the house you first lived in when you got married? <laughs> Do you remember your furniture? Uh, your coffee table that was a... Uh, a, a, a box that you hadn't opened yet because you just moved in <laughs> amen when you had to uh, make um, furniture uh, be creative in, in what you did with furniture because you didn't have the money did it make that house your first house any less of a home even though you don't, didn't have all the nice furniture that you have now did it make any le did it make it any less homely no because it was your house it was your home and so you just knew that that you just it was yours and there was something about having yours for the first time amen you just got married you just got the house and there was something about having it yours even though it wasn't much maybe compared to what you had now and and, and it wasn't your destination 
but it was your starting point. You knew that God was your provider and that God uh, uh, um, would provide for you. And it says here, the Lord is my shepherd. I lack for nothing. Why? Because I know that God has got my back. Amen. I know that God is in control. He says, he makes me lie down in green pastures. Well, I tell you what's happened, guys. As we've gone through this lockdown, we've been made to lie down. <laughs> That's the truth. We've been made to stay at our house. We've been made to stop. We've been made to lie down. We're in lockdown, and we can't just go out and do what we want to do when we do it, when we want to do it like we used to. So we've been made to be still. You can see the lockdown as a positive or as a negative. You can see the lockdown as a prison. You can see it as a torture. You can see it as a stress. You can see it as, you know, as a worry and as a concern. Or you can see it as an opportunity to rest. You can see it as an opportunity to stay safe. Amen. You can see it as an opportunity to protect you and protect your family. You can see it as a positive because we can gather together and we can be here. Amen. And we can worship together. Amen. So it's a positive thing that we've been made to lie down. So don't miss this opportunity. Don't miss this moment. Don't miss this time for the Holy Spirit to do things in you. I know it's tricky. I know it's hard. And I know it's maybe not what we um, wanted to do. But it says, he makes me lie down. <laughs> maybe God is making you and making me tonight to lie down. Maybe he is. Maybe the God saying, right, it's time, guys, for your faith to be built, for you to gather. If we weren't made to lie down, we wouldn't have done 23 nights together. If we weren't forced to lie down, we wouldn't have been gathering together. But because we've been forced to lie down and keep still, we enjoy these moments of getting together as the church, of being inspired by one another and by the comments and how we can just be excited together in the name of Jesus. Amen. Then it says, he leads me beside quiet waters. <laughs> I don't want to make this scripture about the uh, pandemic that we're going through now but have you seen uh, like places in Rome and and various places like this where the waters have cleared up for the first time in like 80 or 100 years because the pollution level has dropped the cities that would be the filled of cars and smoke uh, the air has been cleaner people's asthma has started to clear up uh, people that have been dying from um, those kind of related illnesses have not been dying at the same level as they were. Um, the animals we talked about the other day uh, have been coming down from the mountain in Wales, in Landigno, I think it was. Uh, uh, um, they were walking down because there's no cars on the street and they're trying to explore and become a bit of a nuisance on the streets of, of Wales because they're getting more confident and more bold. And bold. Animals are getting more bold and, uh, you know, and some of the positive things, right, about God or, or about what we're going through. Life's got a little bit quieter and it says that he leads us beside quiet waters. In this time of quietness, what is God saying to me? In this time of quietness, what is God saying to you? Amen. What's he saying to you? Uh, don't miss what he's saying. Maybe you've got to put your house in order. Maybe you need time to work out what is priorities in life and what the main thing is and keeping the main thing the main thing. Maybe God just brought you to a quiet time where you can just, the business of work has stopped and the business of life has stopped and, and maybe you're a single parent and, and you're taking your children uh, or, or you know out to all the clubs and all the, all the things you've got to do. I know with our five children it's become a lot quieter because Samuel had football, they all had piano practice, all, um, uh, well uh, three of them had piano practice, Samuel and Isaac had football, uh, boys brigade, um, uh, swimming uh, lessons, um, gosh, um, uh, many other things I can't think now, but there's, there was many other clubs they had on, um, and all that is stopped. So there's a there's a quieting, there's a 
uh, there's a time where maybe there's a moment for you to readjust and in this quietness hear the voice of God amen good to see you there he says he refreshes my soul he guides me along the right paths for his name's sake he refreshes my soul let's allow this time of quietness let's allow this time to for us to be refreshed are you being refreshed tonight is God refreshing you tonight amen is God blessing you tonight hallelujah hallelujah the truth of the matter is is that God can refresh you and he can refresh me tonight and then it says this and I just love this and this is just great amen <laughs> it says even though even though even when I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I just love that amen even when I walk let me tell you this God's a faithful God and he's an awesome God when I'm top of the mountain he's a faithful God he's an awesome God when I'm on holiday on the beach he's a faithful God when I'm awesome, awesome and an awesome God when things are going right but even when and even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death woo, that's one valley amen even though I walk through the darkest valley I will fear no evil for you are with me your rod and your staff they comfort me God is with you church God is with you through this corona God is with with you if you're going through a divorce God is with you if you're going through unemployment God is with you if you're going through sickness in your body God is with you and it might feel like the shadow the, the 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 valley of death it might feel like that dark valley where things are coming into you but I'm telling you God is with you amen he is with you even when you go through the valley of the shadow of death I will fear no evil for you are with me. He's with you tonight. Amen. He's with you tonight. That's the good news. Your rod, your staff, they comfort me. He's the, the stick, the, 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 the shepherd's crook that he would use to beat off the enemy, to guide the sheep. It's with God. So he's saying that God's walking through the valley with you. But he's not walking empty-handed. Meaning... God's walking through the valley with you, but he's not walking with you because he's powerless. He's not, he's not allowing you to go through this valley because he doesn't have the power to change it. No, he has the power with him. He, he has the rod, he has the staff. He has that power with him. So God's walking with you through this valley, not, not through weakness or hopelessness, or he doesn't know what to do, right? As if he's not in control. He's walking through you, with you, through this valley right because there's some valleys in life we have to walk through there's some situations in life we have to go through but even when you go through the most difficult time in your life it doesn't mean God is not with you and God and even if you know God is with you and you're thinking well why God why can't God change this is he not able to does he not want to is he too weak no 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 he has the power right he has the power he can change it like this he can change everything he can remove that valley he can take you out of that valley but there's certain valleys that you and i need to go through because when we go through those valleys we change and we're transformed and we grow amen there are certain valleys that you and i need to walk through and we don't like them and we don't want to but you and i both know when we come out the other end we are built up our our faith our relationship with God is greater is stronger amen so he he's there with you in strength and he's there with you in power then he says this your rod and your staff comfort me meaning I know that when I go through this valley that you're walking with me in strength and your strength, O oh God, your power, O oh God, the fact that you're walking with me, it gives me comfort. Hallelujah. Amen. I know people that have gone through cancer. I know people that have lost family members. I know people that have lost parents that have lost children. The most difficult thing that you can imagine that I've, I've heard 
I've known people that have gone through stuff. But the fact that God is walking with them through that valley of the shadow of death. They're comforted. They know that God is with them. No matter what situation you go through, He is with you. Amen. In verse 5 it says this. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. Amen. And I would dwell in the house of the Lord forever. They wouldn't read that one more time. It says, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. David's saying, because he's got a revelation of how powerful God is and how awesome God is. And, and he's gone through this valley. He's gone through trials. He's gone through seasons with God. God's always been there with him. When he's been on the mountaintop, God is there. When, but when he's been in the valley, God is there. God has been with him all the time. God has been with him. And what he's saying is, is because of the confidence I have in you, that you can prepare a table and you can sit all my enemies across that table. And I will sit there. I will not fear. I will not get angry. I will not get uh, revenge. I'll be able to sit there because I know that I know that I know that you are with me. I know, God, that they can accuse me. I say, well, how come you went through that valley? Where is your God? <laughs> Amen. Where is God? Why did you go through that situation? Why did you go through that valley? Right? When you have these, these, the enemy, uh, uh, you know, remember the people that attacked Job in the Bible? And Job went through all sorts, lost everything. Cattle, he lost uh, uh, his health, he lost his property, he lost his wife, he lost his children, he lost respect, and he lost honor. Everybody thought that he committed sin. And that's the reason why he was going through these trials and tribulations. So you're able to sit on the table with the enemy opposite you and eat food and they can say, well, where is God here and where is God there and where is God there? But because you know you've just come through a valley and he's been with you because you know that you've gone to green pastures and he's been with you because you know that you that 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 he's enabled you to lie down and to walk by still waters. You know that no matter what situation you're in. If God is for you, then who can be against you? Then it says, you anoint my head with oil and my cup overflows. You anoint my head with oil and my cup overflows. Hallelujah. In the New Testament, it says, out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. Living water will flow out from your belly. Amen. That your cup your container, your heart uh, will overflow with the power and the love of God. The anointing in the Old Testament, the oil was put on the, uh, on the head of Aaron and the high priests and the oil would anoint the head. Amen. And that oil, oil represented the Holy Spirit. So it says that you are anointed. The Holy Spirit has empowered you. Amen. The Holy Spirit has equipped you. The Holy Spirit has filled you with his power, with his joy. Amen. God has given you a heavenly language. If you've been baptized in the spirit tonight, you can speak in tongues. Hallelujah. Amen. You're anointed for such a time as this. It says, surely if he's made me uh, lack for nothing in verse one. If I declare he's my shepherd in verse 1. If he's caused me to lie down on green pastures in verse 2. If he's led me by still waters uh, and he refreshes my soul in verse 2 and 3. If he guides me along the paths in verse 3. right? I could eat, if I've gone through the valley of the shadow of death and he's been there for me. If he's prepared a table for me in my enemies. right? If he's anointed my head. If he's caused me to overflow with goodness and gratitude for him, right? Um, surely goodness 
and love will follow me. Surely the goodness of God is behind me. Why would God protect me like this? Why would God love me like this? Surely wherever I go, no matter what happens, goodness will chase after me. Come on church, goodness will chase after you. Blessings will follow you. You can't help but be blessed. You don't pray to be blessed, you are blessed. You don't pray to be favoured, you're already favoured. You're just walking out the favour and the blessing of the Lord. You're just walking out the joy and the peace of the Lord. You're just walking out in the power and the presence of our God. You're not trying to be something you're not. You are something that you're not. Because without Christ, you wouldn't be powerful with authority. And you wouldn't have the love of God if you never knew Jesus. So it's not somebody that you're trying to be, it's somebody who you are in the new creation. Hallelujah. And that's good news. It says, all the days of my life, all the days, what's my response tonight, church? What's our response tonight? What is our response to God's goodness, God's, God's peace and God's joy? Surely, this goodness will follow me and will run after me. So what's our response? What's David's response? It says, all the days, it says, and surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. This is the end of verse 6 now. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The moment you gave your life or you give your life to Jesus, right? The moment you invite him into your life and repent of your sin and Christ comes into you, you are now part of God's family. And just like it says here, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. If you are genuinely converted to God and you surrender to him and you take up your cross, you enter the presence, the house of God. The word of God says to be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord. Amen. To be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord. Jesus said, when he ascended, I will go before you and prepare a room, prepare a house. In my father's house is many rooms. You know, the moment you give your life to Jesus, the moment you surrender, right, the good news is this, you will dwell in his house all the days of your life. And that's a word for you tonight. The dwelling place where you dwell and where you live are two different places. You can live in the UK, you can live in India, you can live in Africa, you can live in America, Canada, you can live anywhere in the world. You can live in Warsaw, you can live in Birmingham, you can live in Yorkshire. Amen. But where you live or where you dwell are two different places. You can live at your house but not know him and never dwell in his house. Or you can live in your house tonight, but in your house you're dwelling in him. Dwelling at that place of, of, of I'm home. When you gave your life to Jesus, did you have an overwhelming sense of I'm home? Amen. Physically you hadn't changed, geographically you hadn't, you hadn't moved. But the moment you invited Christ into your life, your heart relocated to the kingdom of God. Amen. You felt like you belonged to a family. You felt like you've known God all the days of your life, but yet this was the first day that you met him. The Holy Spirit came and touched you, and you just felt the touch and the blessing of the Holy Ghost. You just knew that you were whole. And the only difference is this. When you close your eyes on earth, you will open them in heaven. But the same presence of God that you experience now in your geographical home, where you live, right? The, the same presence of God that you experience and that you dwell in God on earth will be the same presence of God that you'll dwell in heaven. The only difference is <laughs> there'd be no sin and no selfishness there. 
right, to be able to try and dilute his presence. You will dwell in the presence of God with the angels of the Lord. Isn't that awesome? Well, I think it's only right and fitting that at this moment in time, we give an opportunity for anybody watching to invite the presence of God into your life. If you want to give your life to Jesus and you want to invite him into your heart, then I'm going to say a prayer now and I'd really encourage you to pray that prayer with me because he's an awesome God and you can dwell in his presence tonight. If it's okay with you, would you just bow your heads for a moment? Just repeat this prayer after me. And this would be a prayer of invitation to ask God to come into your life. Dear God, <coughs> thank you for sending your son, Jesus. Thank you for giving your life, Jesus, for me. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. Thank you for taking my place, dying for my sin and my wrongdoing. I recognize that you are holy and you are sinless. I recognize that you stepped out of heaven and you gave your life for me. I invite you into my life. Come and make your home in me. I want to live for you from this day and forevermore. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, we thank the Lord and we praise God. And the Bible says that uh, the angels in heaven rejoice. So let's just rejoice now. And let's just light up that page with as many likes as possible. I'm going to do some on here. Just for us to declare how good God is. Um, and all those people that have given their lives to Jesus tonight. And watching on, on repeat. This is our sort of virtual clap if you like. So let's just, let's just as many times press that. The Bible says that angels in heaven, they rejoice. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Well, guys, remember the Lord is your shepherd. And uh, thanks for tuning in tonight. Um, thanks for seeing so many people, Vera and, and Chico and Sylvia. Great to see you. Sue, always great to have you on. Precious. Regan. Joy. Tracy. And so many people. Isn't it wonderful just to know him? Amen. Just to know God. Well, guys. Let's see what God's going to do over these next few days. Uh, just to remind you again, uh, we do have um, that QR code. If you want to download the app, then please, I'll just move to the side. Just put your phone onto that screen now. And you can download the app. Um, these will have our all our previous um, 23 videos. So they're all on there. And you'll be able to watch those videos of the what we've gone through. But also, we'll be putting new videos on. Um, and over these next few weeks, we'll put as much information on there as possible for it to be used uh, to encourage people. You can send people the link. Uh, the rock church dot app and then people can download it doesn't matter what country you're in you can download it and you can also download it on any device on ipad on tablet um, on a laptop computer and on your phone and all you need to do is put your email in and then any updates any notifications we will start pushing through to that app so um, in the next few weeks it would be great. I think we've had about, oh, I'm not sure, about 47, 50 people download it. So that's great. And uh, so that's really exciting uh, what God's doing on that. And we're going to use that even more. Praise God. And also, just to, uh, uh, we have this out on Facebook. You can share this with people. 
let people know uh, what we're doing and let's invite as many people on with us because we've gone from 21 days we're going to go to 31 days so you can let people know you can invite them and it'd be great 31 days 8 o'clock every night I've just noticed on there I've just noticed on that flyer, it actually says in the box, 21 days, 21 Psalms, um, 21 words. The one on the website, it's got 31, the proper one. So you, you, you can use the proper one and you can share it <coughs> with people. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God. What an incredible God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. We pray a blessing over your house. We pray a blessing uh, over your family we pray for favor and we pray for protection uh, God is your shepherd and he will lead you in green pastures and beside still waters and even though we're going through a valley like situation at this moment in time as we're going through um, the um, coronavirus pandemic right he's going to protect you and he's going to protect me in the mighty name of Jesus hallelujah Hallelujah. Well, I'm going to uh, just play some notices um, as we play out. This is what we've done at the end of church. He's got some information on there. On Saturday morning, uh, we're having a Zoom meeting, uh, a men's breakfast. We had one last Saturday. We had a great time. And so we're encouraging even more people to come. Uh, and that information is on Facebook as well. So we're having another Zoom meeting um, at I think it's 9.30 so uh, we're going to have a breakfast so cook your breakfast at home hallelujah, and then we'll put that breakfast and we'll eat it together um, virtually as we're on um, our devices and so that would be really good fun and, and that's going to be exciting have a blessed and incredible night right? and I really look forward to seeing you tomorrow at 8 o'clock as we go into Psalm 24 uh, I would keep the music playing or what we do is we'll, we'll, we'll actually play um, the notices with, with the um, this is how we fight our battles um, have an incredible night and we look forward to seeing you tomorrow in the mighty name of Jesus God bless you and good night